Welcome to the module on Helpline for Children in Difficult Circumstances. Learning Objective First, to provide basic understanding about the exclusive toll-free helpline system in India that intervenes to offer help and protection to children who are in difficult circumstances. Second, to equip the learner with knowledge that is sufficient enough to make use of the child helpline for the benefit of children. Part 1 We will begin with tracing the history of child helpline in India. Protection of children from any form of abuse or exploitation or neglect and providing emergency assistance to children who are in any kind of difficult circumstance is a prime responsibility of the family, government and civil society organizations. It was in 1996 that the idea of a telephone-based emergency child helpline was first conceived in India. In those days, telephone-based helplines were not very popular in India as there was no mobile telephone networks and landline connections were not as widespread. The origins of child helpline in India could be traced to the fieldwork placement of students of social work. Some students of Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, were placed for their fieldwork at Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, popularly known as VT Station of the Central Railway of Mumbai. These students were placed there to work with street children who were found in large numbers in and around the railway station. Many of these children had left their own families to escape from the exploitative or abusive home environment. Many of them had travelled to Mumbai in search of opportunities for livelihood and better living conditions. At the station premises, where thousands of passengers congregated each day, these three children engaged themselves in rag picking, cleaning the railway bogies, selling water in recycled bottles and in other odd jobs that they could find and by which they could earn some money that was enough for their daily needs. Many of them enjoyed a greater degree of freedom on the streets of Mumbai and hence continued to live near the railway station. The students thought about ensuring the safety of these children and in encouraging them to accept certain measures of rehabilitation that they had devised for them in partnership with other voluntary organizations. Having enjoyed the freedom on the streets, many of these children disliked a life of discipline in an institutional setting and therefore preferred the street life. These children said that they were safe during daytime. However, they admitted to the students that they were faced with exploitation, abuse and other difficulties on the streets mostly during night from anti-social elements, beggars and even from policemen and they needed some mechanism for their protection. They required someone to help them when they were confronted with problems. The students decided to offer help to these children. They brought these issues of street children before their faculty supervisor, Ms. Jero Billimoria. It was decided that street children could call them on their home telephones from public telephone booths. Only landlines existed in those days. Whenever they needed help, this was the beginning of an emergency helpline system for children in difficult circumstances in India. 
the students soon began to receive several calls from street children even during odd hours requesting help. They then realized that they were not able to deal with the situation and required a more organized helpline system. This was in June 1996. Considering the potentials for social work intervention to ensure child protection with the help of a telephone helpline, the Department of Family and Child Welfare of the Tata Institute of Social Sciences formulated a field action project which envisioned reaching out to help children in difficult circumstances through a telephone helpline called Childline. Part 2 Universal 4 Digit Helpline Number TIS then requested the Mumbai Police Commissioner to allow them to use the Police Emergency Number 100 as the number to contact Childline to help children when they were in need. This suggestion was however not acceptable to the police department as the control room number 100 was primarily meant for people to contact the police control room so that immediate help could be rushed to prevent crimes and arrest criminals. TIS then got in touch with the telephone department with their request. The Mumbai telephones also requested Childline to suggest a four digit number for the helpline. By then, the student had an excellent rapport with the three children and had regular meetings called open house with them. In one such open house, the street children were asked to suggest a four digit number for the child helpline. Quite surprisingly, the children came out with an easy to remember number 1098 1098 thus now art in Hindi. The number was conveyed to the telephone department and they commissioned the first four digit toll free child helpline in the country called Childline with a universal number 1098 with restricted accessibility within Mumbai city. The only professionally managed helpline in Mumbai and perhaps in the whole of India till then was the suicide prevention helpline run by the Samaritans but it had a regular telephone number and not a four digit toll free universal number. As a result, the suicide prevention helpline number was not widely known and was not easy to remember. Childline from day one made an effort to ensure visibility to the number and make its existence widely known. Part 3 Government Partnership Realizing that the child line model was a successful one, efforts were made by TIS for scaling up the service. A national workshop titled Child Line A National Service was organized at Tata Institute of Social Sciences by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India on 23rd to 25th June 1998. This workshop finalized a draft of the proposed child line scheme. The draft was submitted to Srimati Manika Gandhi, the then Union Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment, who also attended the workshop as a guest of honor. She was convinced about the immense potential of this helpline service and she managed that her ministry will partner with the TIS in promoting childline service across the country. The ministry then decided to launch childline under the integrated street children scheme in a phased manner covering the major cities in the first phase. The second child line in the country came up in New Delhi 
and by 1998 the third one started ringing in Nagpur. Subsequently, having up accomplished the objectives of field action project, TIS decided to hand over child line activity to an independent body for its growth. The Child Line India Foundation that is CIF was then formed in partnership with the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. The CIF was mandated to work towards replication of child line service in the country. The CIF consists of various departments like services, communication and strategic in initiatives, finance and administration and resource mobilization. In 2006, after the Ministry of Women and Child Development was set up by the Union Government, Child Line Service was transferred to this ministry. Child Line formed an integral part of the Integrated Child Protection Scheme ICPS, which is being implemented by the Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India since the fiscal 2009-2010. Part 4. Let us discuss the characteristics of child line. The setting up of child line was in response to a situation marked by lack of an emergency service for children, restricted outreach of existing organizations and the ad hoc role of allied systems in child protection. Child Line is not just a telephone counselling service, but an emergency helpline that intervenes in cases whenever necessary. The caller has the option to reveal or not reveal his or her identity. It was conceived as a toll-free 24-hour emergency phone outreach service for children in need of care and protection. Thus, it was an intervention service available on a 24 by 7 basis from its inception, which meant it could be accessed 24 hours on all the days of the year. The purpose was to reach out to the caller if necessary and provide the necessary intervention. This necessitated the creation of an efficient and committed network which could reach any nook and corner of the city within the least possible time. Thus, right from the beginning, Child Line laid emphasis on building partnerships. Committed voluntary organizations in different parts of the country were identified as partners and were named as collaborative organizations for running the service by responding to the calls. A few other voluntary organizations were invited as support organizations which provided help in matters of follow-up. Academic institutions like social work colleges also became part of the partnership as nodal organizations providing training, awareness advocacy, documentation and rendering overall support to strengthen the helpline. Thus, the child helpline service in the country has three types of partner organizations, namely collaborative organizations, support organizations and nodal organizations. Besides visibility, easy accessibility and toll-free nature, the other important parameters for the success of a professional helpline are that it should be sensitive to the needs of caller and should not pass value judgments. It should maintain confidentiality about the caller, ensure credible and reliable intervention within the least possible time and it should be sustainable. Childline maintained all these aspects 
from its very beginning. In addition, it also allowed children to chat freely with the social workers, even when they were not in difficult circumstances requiring help. This was consciously done in an effort to provide children the emotional support that they needed and to win over their confidence in the service. Part 5 Growth of Child Line Based on the 2011 census figures, it is estimated that India is a home to almost 19% of the world's children. It is also a fact that more than one third of the country's population, around 44 crore, is below 18 years. Two out of every three children in India were physically abused. Over 50% children were being subjected to one or the other form of physical abuse. Around 65% of school-going children reported facing corporal punishments, that is two out of three children were victims of corporal punishment. 53.22% children reported having faced one or more forms of sexual abuse. A helpline service that has to cater to this large segment has to certainly grow in its reach and capacity to be effective. By July 2015, Childline had grown into a countrywide network of 617 partner organizations and Childline service was available to children in 329 cities or districts across 31 states unit, union territories in India. Today, Childline is the only development sector service that can be accessed across the country from all telecom service providers and is India's largest helpline service in terms of the number of calls received. The plan is to set up Childline in all the districts in the country in a phased manner. As an offshoot of Child Line in the year 2000, the National Initiative for Child Protection NICP, was launched by the National Institute of Social Defense. Child Line India Foundation played a key role in conceiving this initiative and making it functional across the country through its network. Through NICP, allied systems are provided training in various aspects of child rights and child protection with a view to ensure better coordination of different agencies. Subsequently, the NICP became a framework for the Ministry of Women and Child Development to initiate the Integrated Protection Scheme. In the year 2015, the Ministry of Women and Child Development, in collaboration with the Ministry of Railways, launched the initiative of Railway Child Line, which envisaged setting up of Child Line help desks at major railway stations across the country to ensure speedy intervention when children in trains or railway stations needed help. Part 6 Operational Methodology of Child Line In India, Child Line is a phone outreach based intervention model and the work begins when a call for help comes in. As soon as this happens, the local Child Line team swings into action for direct intervention. Intervention covers a range of actions from rescuing children from abusive circumstances and child labor, providing immediate SOS attention in accidents and other medical emergencies, to registering a case at the police station, presenting a child to the Child Welfare Committee in city or district, 
and preparing the papers for onward action as directed by the CWC. Each case is unique in nature. Some take less than an hour to resolve whereas, others take months to work. From its inception, Childline recognized that it could not work alone. Hence, it sought to involve various allied systems such as Department of Telecommunications, the healthcare system, the police, the juvenile welfare boards and child welfare committees, residential institutions for children, the railways, the transport system, etc. to ensure protection of children. Very often, the team provides unique solutions that require a relevant interpretation of legislation such as the Juvenile Justice Act and others and sensitize allied institutions on issues. At the city or district level, the child line advisory boards comprising of representatives of government and local self-government officials, voluntary sector workers, police and other allied system functionaries along with child line members monitor its functioning and introduce supportive measures. Usually, the district collectors function as the chairpersons of the CABs. When Childline began its operation in India, telephones with a 1098 number were directly connected to the collaborative organizations and callers using 1098 could directly talk to the Childline team members. In the year 2008, with a view to provide a more systematic approach to receiving and documenting calls, the modern day technology of a call center was adopted by Childline. Thus, today the voice of every caller from the northern and the western regions of India reaches Childline through the Childline call center, which is the central body to which all 1098 calls in these two regions are diverted. In course of time, CIF plans to bring all regions of the country under the CCC. Part 7 Outreach Programs Outreach programs and open houses are organized by child team members in different parts of the city or district with a view to promote awareness about the service and also to understand the issues that affect child rights. Such efforts also help build confidence among children to call child line during emergencies. Besides using telephones to contact child line for help, it is also possible to personally report issues to child line during such outreach or open house programs. While in most cases, 72 percent the callers use the 1098 number to contact child line, in some cases, 14 percent children requested assistance of child line during outreach programs conducted by child line team members. In some other cases, 7 percent adults visited the child line office to report the issue. In a few cases, that is 4 percent, other voluntary organizations referred cases to child line. Part 8 Nature of calls received by child line Child line across the country receive calls from worried parents, sensitive adults, community well-wishers and distraught children themselves. Calls for interventions range from cases of child marriage, child labor, domestic child labor, medical aid, child sexual abuse, child physical abuse, cases of mentally challenged children, cases of child trafficking 
and child beggary rackets. It has been reported by Child Line India Foundation that the highest number of intervention calls were about missing children 21.74 percent followed by calls for shelter 19.66 percent protection from abuse 17.36 percent child restoration 15.72 percent medical emergencies 15.09 percent and sponsorship 9.99 percent in that order. CIF reported that in 2011 to 12 the majority of the children 65 percent assisted by child line across India were males. It was also reported that 47 percent children called child line from mobile phones. Calls from landlines accounted for 20 percent of the total calls. Age of children assisted by child line. The report shows that the vast majority that is 71 percent of children who are assisted by child line belong to the age group of 6 to 15 years. Obviously, these children are of school going age and it brings to the fore the significance of child helpline for school going children. Conclusion The telecommunication boom was yet to happen and mobile telephone was yet to enter India when the child line was set up in Mumbai in 1996. Today, India's telecommunication network is the second largest in the world next only to China based on the total number of telephone users, both fixed and mobile phone. The Indian telecom industry has grown over 20 times in just 10 years from under 37 million subscribers in the year 2001 to over 846 million subscribers in the year 2011. It is a well known fact that telecommunication has significantly supported the socio-economic development of India and has played a vital role to narrow down the rural urban digital divide to some extent. It is quite certain that helpline services in the country are bound to become the backbone of crisis and disaster in intervention system in the coming days under these circumstances. The Child Line India Foundation aims to strengthen and systematize child protection in India through its collaborative and collective efforts with the government of India, state governments and civil society organizations in order to make children's issue a priority on the national agenda. The Ministry of Women and Child Development has mandated CIF with the expansion of this service to cover all districts in the country. The modus operandi of Child Helpline developed and fine-tuned by CIF is a 24 by 7 emergency toll-free phone outreach service linking children in need of care and protection with government and civil society organizations. Child Line is a crucial link between needy children and the available services. It acts as a one-point contact which facilitates instant access to support, active intervention, guidance or just emotional support as per the caller's need. It is an appropriate and sustainable model ideal for the Indian realities. It is a model that is worthy of emulation by other helplines in the country. Summary of the module. In this module, we traced the history of child helpline in India, government partnership, discussed the characteristics of child line, 
growth of child line, modus operandi of child line, outreach programs, nature of calls received by child line. Thank you for attending this session.